Tonight's species comes in a variety of color, black, yellow, and blue. They are also very popular on the sushi menu, so if you haven't guessed by now, we're talking tuna here on the one and only Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, powered by Harbor Trucks and presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, Rick, and you miss it. You're just dancing. Keep I dancing. Know. No, no, He's no. excited. I don't to want talk. him to see my moves. Oh, no, we don't. Like we do not want to see those moves. No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking tuna tonight, and Rick, I think the best part about catching tuna is getting to eat the tuna. Absolutely. Right? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, Chef Taylor is here on the burners cooking up something delicious for us. Hey, Miss Taylor. And Dave, of course, is at the CCA workbench with plenty to say about catching some mouthwatering tuna. Yeah, yep. he's the most pursued fish on the planet, so we're going to try to teach you how to pursue him even harder. Harder. We go <laughs> hard <more>. here. <laughs> All right, Captain Pat Dunigan in the Yeti Panhandle region is starting the tuna conversation off today, and for good reason. So, Pat, let's hear it. Hey, Bree, we have good tuna fishing year-round in the Panhandle. Yellowfin and blackfins are the primarily targeted species, but we also have bluefin and big eye. The yellowfin tunas are out at the spur in the, in the DeSoto Canyon area, but if you really want to target them specifically, go to the floating rigs where they're mainly caught by live baiting and chunking. Uh, right now, out by the spur, there is some sporadic surface yellowfin activity, so if you're out there, have a spinning rod with a popper handy to cast into that, those, uh, those blitzes. Some of the best yellowfin fishing of the year occurs in the fall. as water tempers temperatures start to drop. It's certainly my favorite time to fish for them. Uh, the blackfins are also caught out by the floaters, but they're also commonly caught along and just off of the edge at, you know, 100 to 250, 300 foot of water. We got a nice one last week while live bait for amberjack on a deep wreck. And additionally, the, ba the blackfins will show up near the beach in the fall where they're found chasing schools of ballyhoo. And then finally, the big boys, the bluefins, they're in the northern Gulf springtime into June where they are occasionally caught near the deep floaters, primarily while targeting marlin, uh, live baiting with a small tuna for bait. The state record, an 840-pounder, was caught that way by Captain Joey Burbick and his crew on the You Never Know last season. So we pretty much got all the flavors in the northern Gulf. Um, staying offshore, the vermilion snappers. We've got good numbers of vermilion or mingo snapper coming in from the Gulf waters. The majority are caught using a two-hook chicken rig, baited with cut bait. But you can also target them with small minnows or shrimp on a Carolina rig. With the Carolina rig, you also have a better chance of catching mangroves and lane snappers as a bycatch. Find them on reefs and wrecks and 80 plus feet of water. Most mingos are running 12 to 14 inches, but you can't find them much bigger, you know, what they call those big bull mingos. And then moving inshore, the Spanish mackerel fishing in the bay remains consistent. A lot of rain minnows are up in the bays and bayous, and the Spanish are feeding on them. Early in the morning, there's been a pretty good bite around the Shalimar Bridge. You can catch the, the Spanish by casting spoons, straw rigs, or diamond jigs. But trolling those same lures can be particularly effective. Some of the bigger ones are caught by chumming the points and edges with pilchards and then freelining a bait. And then you can also uh, catch those bigger Spanish Cat the West Roser style by casting the chug bug surface bait around those deeper grass flats. The bigger bay Spanish are running up to and over five pounds, you know, so those big axe handle Spanish are being caught. And then finally, the mangrove snapper are on the structure in deeper parts of the bay and also around the inlet bridges and the rocks. There's plenty of, plenty of mangroves to be had. Throw your cast down on some filters, load up the live well with two to three inch baits, Fish them on Carolina rig with enough weight to hold the bottom. You know, two to three feet of 15 pound fluorocarbon as a leader and a small wire hook. Uh, the best fishing is on the beginning and the end of the moving tide. Those bay mangroves are running up to and maybe a little bit over 12 inches long. So that's pretty good activity right there. All right, thank you so much, Pat. We're gonna take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. In short, he says, redfish on the falling tide in Destin Bridge using live croakers, vermilion snappers on natural and artificial bottom in 100 to 150 feet of water using cut bait, Bree. All right, Rick, it's time to talk tuna in the Bell's Central East region next with Captain Jim Ross. So, Jim, tell them where them tuna at. Well, if they're wanting blackfin, Bree, they need to stay on the western side of the Gulf Stream. That's where these fish normally run. They're in the 21 Fathom Ridge is a really good place to start and pull dark colored lures at about six to 10 knots. Now, I prefer cone shaped lures with a metal head or a heavy plastic head covering like a lead head uh, that's underneath it. That's the, the, way, the best way to get those lures to stay in the water at the higher speeds that the blackfin typically like you to troll at. Now, if you're searching for yellowfin tuna, you need to consider running to the other side of the Gulf Stream. This is probably where about 99% of these fish reside. You want to use your radar and find packs of birds 
and then work uh, in and around those areas. You want to run to them so that you can get your lines in the water and capitalize on that feeding frenzy real quickly. Most of our blackfin run about 15 to 30 pounds, and most of our yellowfin are normally between about 30 and 80 pounds. And I have a photo of Spence Wise with a fresh chunk of yellowfin sashimi that he caught last week when he was over on the western side or on the eastern side of the Gulf Stream. Now, the other bite that we have going on right now is the kingfish bite. And last week, it was absolutely insane on the 70 to 90 foot reefs. And this week, is still pretty good while you're slow trolling those live baits that we talk about all the time. Pogies, pilchards, greenies, mullet, they'll all work. Put them on a wire stinger rig, and you should be able to get you a couple of really nice uh, sized king mackerel. Now, lip diving plugs will also work. Naked chin weighted ballyhoo will also work and get them to strike as well. Now, last week, most of the fish started coming to the beach because of the full moon so they could spawn, but a lot of them have remained there this week. So if you want big king mackerel, stay on the beaches 30, 40, 50 feet of water, and you're going to average fish anywhere from about 14 to 20 pounds, and you're going to have a lot of fish still running into that mid and upper 30 pound range that are in there feeding on those bait fish. Now, swinging inshore, the deeper sections of the lagoon are still holding really nice sized black drum right now. So good places that you want to go try this weekend are Hallover Canal, the Clinker Islands on the west side of the Hallover Canal, is, uh, or north of the Hallover Canal, will also work really, really good for you guys and gals. And then any of the bridges crossing the Indian or Banana River between Melbourne and Titusville, they all seem to be holding black drum right now. Now the best way to get them to strike is either using a live shrimp or a cut crab, and you can put that on a jig head or a slide and sinker rig, and just put it down there near the pilings, and you should be able to get those drum that are running 15 to 20 pounds. And I took Aubrey and a Dunn out the other day, and I've got a photo of her with one of the black drum that she caught while she was out with with me fishing uh, using a live shrimp. And then my last species this week, gang, is a sn the snook. And of course, we've got snook getting ready to open up and everybody's getting excited about it. So gather up your Rapala Super Shads if you like to troll, or your x 14s if you like to cast off the jetties, or your Twitchin' Mullet if you like to cast near docks and mangroves, because the snook are going to be at all of these places throughout the region. Right now, most of our fish are going to be right there about that 25 to 30 inch range, but you can get some bigger fish, especially if you're using some pigfish, croakers, pinfish, or mullet rigged on a VMC 7385 circle hook. Put it down on the bottom with some 30 to 50 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader, and you can do really well. And I've got another picture here with Chad Corthius, and, well, actually, of Chad Corthius' kids with a Central East snook that they caught with me just the other day, getting ready, doing a little preseason scouting. One last thing before I go, guys. There, you're, if you have a small boat like me, I've got a 24-foot bay boat. I spent all day using my XM Sirius weather feature on my XM Sirius subscription. If you guys and gals have a small boat, get in, get in touch with somebody that's got this. Go see it for yourself. Get it for yourself because it is an absolute lifesaver when it comes to dodging storms like I basically did all day today. I was able to keep my guy out all day for the full trip by simply using my radar and allowing me to get around the storms because I could see which direction they were coming at me. So I really highly recommend that. All right, thank you so much, Jim. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the sea sucker hotspots from the Central East region. Offshore gag grouper on the reefs in 180 to 250 feet of water. Use live grunts or croakers on a standard bottom rig and then inshore. Snook at the inlets, use live baits during the day and Rapala x 14 lures at night at the jetty. All right, get ready anglers. We're dropping a line in the Keys region up next, but first we're seeing what kind of line Dave Farrell is dropping at the CCA workbench for well, some techniques. I've got a line, size doesn't matter. Um. Well, it does. Okay. Size does matter. Keep telling everybody. Okay, I'm gonna we'll keep be back. Saying. Okay. <laughs> On that note. Especially with tuna. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Contender boats. Always in the game. Sirius XM Marine. Weather, fishing info, and channel surfing. Daiquiri Deck. Sarasota's favorite place to meet. And Sea Sucker, get pumped. Hi, this is Chris Freeland of Harbor Trucks. And my family has been in the business for over 70 years, and I hope that means as much to you as it does to us. Trucks have always been my passion, and I've assembled a team of experts to help find the right truck for you. Harbor Trucks also has a dedicated commercial department that can design and deliver the perfect truck or van for your business anywhere in the country. Our staff includes master technicians ensuring every one of our trucks goes through a rigorous inspection and reconditioning process. We also have a team of customization experts that can build the truck of your dreams, including custom tires, rims, bumpers, LED lights, and more. Come test drive every make and model in one location at our on-site towing and test course, or we can deliver an amazing truck directly to you. 
Harbor Trucks, hassle-free buying and low, low, low prices. Check us out now at harbortrucks.com. That's harbortrucks.com. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Welcome back. Here's a look at the FWC news and notes. September 8th, there's a kids fishing clinic in Daytona Beach, and also on September 8th is the Peace River Boating Course. For more information, visit myfwc.com. But now let's head to the CCA workbench for some rigs and techniques. Well, we're here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques at the yes, CCA sir. Workbench. Dave, tunas is our topic tonight. How are we going to catch them? Well, I got like 13 things to say. So first off, you know, tuna, like I said before, they're one of the most pursued fish. So, you know, you got to be careful when you're chasing these fish. They get a little bit wary sometimes because um, they're, they're getting pounded a lot. Everybody wants to catch a tuna fish. So, you know, you need to take that into consideration. Uh, tuna have excellent eyesight. And they have really good color vision, which is, is rare among fishes. You know, not all fishes can see a lot of colors, but tunas can. So it's very important to try to match the hatch with the size and the color. Mostly the size, though. You know, uh, when, when, you see, when you see tuna fish eating and you can't see what they're eating, always assume that it's something really tiny. And you bring down your, your offerings to, to that, uh, try to match whatever it is. And if you catch one and it starts burping up little squids and stuff this size, you know that you're going to get a lot more bites if you pull baits this big. Mm -hmm. and, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter how big the bait is. You know, you want to get the bite. If you're using a nice heavy-duty live bait hook inside that little tiny uh, skirt, that's all you really need. You just need a, a heavy enough hook that'll hang on once that mate grabs the leader on that, on, you know, it has to hold 40 pounds generally, because you're going to be probably using 40 pound fluorocarbon leader to try to get these tuna fish to bite, right. you know. Um, when we see them uh, up on the surface, a lot of times we're out chasing birds, because I live up where Jim does, so we have to go, like he said, all the way across the Gulf Stream if we want to catch yellowfin tunas, blackfin tunas will hang around the shrimp boats and stuff with the bonitas and whatnot. But if we really want to catch yellowfin tunas to eat, we got to go across the Gulf Stream. And we're looking at our radars trying to find the birds. And a good rule of thumb is if you find a little scattering of birds, go ahead and ignore that one. Because if you run over there, the odds are it's going to be a bunch of little skipjacks and blackfins. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see that big bird nado, you know, with yeah, giant yeah. Uh, frigate birds and everything else involved and the tuna birds, that's probably going to be the, the best bet to start pulling your stuff around that. You know, go ahead and make the run to that thing and ignore those little tiny, you know, twos and fuse birds because they're usually around <clears throat> those smaller tunas and we're out there wanting to catch big tunas. So, you know, a lot of times we'll use a cedar plug, the cedar plugs of all different shapes and sizes. These are very common. What, what makes the cedar plug work so cool is, is it pulls from the back. When you're, when you're going along, it'll pull from the back and it wobbles like crazy and it looks like a little bait fish darting that these fish are eating on the surface. What happens is, is these tuna will push the bait up to the surface and that's, and that's how we see them and it can actually get a bait in front of them. And they, and they will eat all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of the things that we like to use try to mimic a flying fish. 
Uh, so a lot of the stuff that we'll use will be blue and white or even like that <laughs> the little flying fish, like little that little gummy. Flyer, yeah, gummy. exactly. And, you know, if you're not getting bit with these things and you've already went down in size, go ahead and start getting your stuff a little bit further back from the boat. Because, again, like I said, the, the more that you're out there chasing these things, there's another 50 guys out there doing the same thing. And those schools get pounded pretty hard, and they get, they get really wary. So a lot of times, you'll have to put your stuff way back. And when you see these schools, you want to try to get up in front of them. You know, you don't want to go plowing through them from behind or coming through the side. And it, and it makes a lot of sense to tell the boys downstairs or, or in the back of the boat saying, hey, I see a bunch of tunas up there. Let's get all this stuff rigged up before we get up there and, and so I can make a good pass. Right. You know, getting that good pass with all the right stuff in the water is key. You know, you, if you get up there and make a, a good pass and you've got the big stuff out still, you're not going to get a bite. If you, get all, if you get all the good stuff out, but the captain comes right through the middle of the school and doesn't get out in front of him and let the baits come in front of the school instead of the boat, then you're not going to get a bite. And, you know, that's the key to a tuna is getting the bites out of them. Once you find that little pattern, what they're eating, and you start getting bites, they're fairly easy to catch after that, except for the pain they give you. Because unlike a blue marlin that stupid and comes to the surface and jumps, once you get a big tuna on, he's going straight to the bottom. And, and it's been the big pinwheels. Yeah, people of, think pin amberjack. Pinwheels of pain. People think those. amberjack fight <laughs> hard, but tunas are worse. Bree yeah. knows about those pinwheels of pain. I remember <laughs> the pinwheels of pain very well. All right, if you're in the Keys, you know the humps are a good place to start if you want to get some tuna time in. So let's listen up to Captain Randy Tao for the nitty gritty. Go for it, Randy. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, when we talk about tunas this time of year, we really don't get many yellowfin tunas, although every now and then you catch one way offshore looking for a dolphin, but most of it comes from the humps. We've got one off Isla Mirada, one off of Key Largo, a couple off of Marathon, and these are known areas where you want to go tuna fishing and catch something for dinner, this is where you go. And you want to troll dark feathers or small eels. They make these little black eels in pink and black, and troll them slow, and you're going to catch dinner almost no such thing as a guarantee, but pretty sure you're going to do it, especially first thing in the morning. And if you want to target the bigger ones, you're going to want a vertical jig, something that gets down to where these fish are. Some of the bigger fish are 100 feet down. Or you got live bait. Your live bait's going to bring them up to the surface, but you're also going to bring the sharks too. So you might not catch as many as you want, but the ones you do catch, they're going to be really big. And we're talking probably in the 30-pound range. So... That's kind of how we do it around here. The guys in Key West, they get behind the shrimp boats, and the guys anchor the shrimp boats, and as they're cleaning their, their uh, haul, these tunas get behind the boat, and a lot of the guides will get behind the shrimp boats, and they'll start chumming along with them, and they really get the tunas like that in shallow water. But that's a whole different scenario, the way those guys do it, than what we have up here. But Captain Richard Black, one of the good guides around town here, and he's up and coming offshore and backcountry. His business is Blackfly Charters out of uh, the Lorelei. I've got a photo with his young angler, uh, uh, Walker Wittenborn, with a big tuna they caught on the Alamrata Hump. All right, keep going, bub. Cubera Snapper. You know, these things only cooperate certain times a year, and it happens to be July and August are prime time, and a live lobster is the best bait to catch these things. Now. There's deep wrecks up off of Key Largo. We have deep wrecks off of Isla Mirada and Marathon. And this is the area you're going to want to target, and it's most at night. So you're going to go during the, during the nighttime, take your live lobsters. Of course, they need to be legal size, and drop them down. And you want to have a pretty stout rod, a 50 or an 80-pound rod, because believe it or not, a 50 or a 60-pound Cubera snapper is really going to pull like you, you can't imagine. And that's what these guys do. Around the full moon is best, a couple of days before. On the full moon, a couple of days after, seems to be the prime time to go looking for the Cubera snappers on these deep wrecks. And uh, I've got a photo from Captain Bouncer Smith. Now, he's out of Miami, but he comes to Key Largo, and he fishes the wrecks off of Ocean Reef. And David and Joe, they were fishing with Bouncer. They caught this 100-pounder, and they also caught eight along with that one that night. Dang. That's a funny picture. You can barely see him. Man, all right, <laughs> let's go inshore, bub. 
You know, red fishing this time of year, it seems like the hotter the month, the better the red fishing. And we haven't had good red fishing, but it's gotten better. Certainly, August has been good for a lot of us in the backcountry of Alamrata and also out toward Flamingo. So flats fishing has been pretty good where a lot of guys are targeting the redfish right now. And some of them are in big schools when you, uh, when you get the tide right. And, and that's key. Timing is key in the backcountry. And a low rising tide, these fish come out of the deeper water up onto some of these flats. And if you've been there at the right time, you know what I'm talking about. It's really something special to see these fish tailing and to see the amount of fish that do get up on these flats. And it's very short-lived. So if, if you're not, if your timing's off, you miss it altogether and you don't think anything's there. But that's where the, the Keys guides really, um, they kind of earn their money when they take somebody fishing because they know when to be where at the right time. And it's really important. And I love talking about young Connor Ross. I've got a photo of him. He goes to high school here in Alamrata, and as soon as he gets off school, he's in his boat in the backcountry doing something, red fishing, bone fishing. I've got a photo of a red fish he caught on fly the other day, and this is how he spends most of his afternoons. All right, one more species. What do you got, Bubba? Permit. You know, permit fishing's great, and this time of year we catch them on the flats, we catch them in the backcountry, so there's quite a few around, and a live blue crab will get the job done. And you want to cast it so that they can see the crab going to the bottom. It'll make a big difference on that fish biting. I've got a photo from Brandon Sear with his angler, Connor Flanagan, with a nice permit they caught on fly. Thank you so much, Randy. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys. Randy says that we should go inshore red fishing, fish the flats in and around Flamingo on the beginning of the rising tide. Early morning and late in the day has been best. And then offshore, blackfin tunas fish the offshore humps Early in the morning, troll dark feathers or black eels slow for dinner size tunas. Okay, Rick, let's check out some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys, shall we? We shall. We shall. The Reef Lionfish Derby is set for September 14th to the 16th in Key Largo. This tournament is geared towards divers and prizes will be awarded on a team basis. The Herman Lucerne Memorial Backcountry Fishing Championship is set for September 21st through the 23rd based in Isla Mirada. Anglers will target seven species during this tournament. The Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge is scheduled for September 28th through the 30th in Key Largo. Anglers will focus on species including trout, snook, and redfish while raising funds for local student scholarships. The second tournament in the Redbone Trilogy set for October 5th through the 7th, the Baybone Celebrity Tournament in Isla Mirada targets permit and bonefish to raise money for cystic fibrosis research and treatment. And Rick, I think we now need to check in with Andy Newman to see what tournament he's featuring this week. I wonder what you got, Andy. What do you got? Well, hi guys. The Isla Mirada Fall All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship kicks off on October 7th with fishing on the 8th through the 10th. One angler per boat pairs with a licensed captain to vie for winner's trophies for releases of the three longest bonefish and three longest permit. For more information, call 561-346-3193. And for more details on all tournaments in the Florida Keys, it's flakeys.com. All right, we have one more tournament for you all, and you might be familiar with this. Right. Look out for the Maverick Boat Group Owners Tournament, September 27th through the 30th in Isla Mirada out of the Breezy Palms Resort. This family-oriented tournament is open to Maverick Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia boat owners, where there will be great food and great fishing, of course, while competing to win a ton of prizes. So for more information, go to any of the brand websites and click on the Owners Events tab on the Owners page. But I want you to look alive, my people. The Southeast and Northeast regions are up next, and and so is lovely Chef Taylor with a new tuna recipe for y'all. So stay Taylor. hooked on the Florida Insider Here Fishing Report. Oh, We're look coming. how good that looks. Yum, yeah. yum, yum, <laughs> yum, yum, yum. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by PowerPole, Swift, Silent, Secure, Bass Assassin, and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. The American Fishing Tackle Company, any fish, any water, since 1958. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. 
I'm Captain Rick Murphy and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Harbor Trucks features the largest selection of new and pre-owned trucks in the country, an on-site towing and test course, and a team of truck specialists. Come line up every make and model in one location and find the truck of your dreams, or we'll build it custom for you. Harbor Trucks, hassle-free buying, and low, low, low prices. Check us out now at harbortrucks.com or two miles off I-75 in Port Charlotte, Florida. So we're here at Harbor Trucks with the lovely Sean Freeland. And Sean, you guys have a huge amount of trucks. Why don't you tell me about this? We sure do, Rick. That's one thing we have here, our trucks, trucks, trucks. We actually have the largest inventory in the whole country. Wow. We have Fords, we have Chevys, we have Dodge, we have Toyota, and of course we have Nissans. So let me ask you this. We're gonna buy a Nissan or another brand you guys have the ability to customize it. Tell me about that. Sure, we absolutely do. So first of all, we want to make sure that the person gets the right truck for their personality, whether that be for work or for fun. Once we get you in that right vehicle, we can customize it even further. We can lift it. We can put tires on it. We can put some truck boxes on it. Right. We can do anything you want. So, you know, I would never buy a boat without test driving it. And you guys have something that's very unique. Tell me about that. We have a course that you can put the truck on. It has all types of different terrain. Right. There's sand, there's gravel, there's hills you can go up. There's also a loaded trailer. You can hook that trailer up to the truck and see how it does. So, you know, one of the problems in buying a vehicle in a lot of cases is it takes forever. You guys have a hassle-free policy. You want to enlighten me on that? We do. We have a hassle-free process here. And what that basically entails is this is not like you're back in middle school and you're writing your girlfriend a note saying, check the box, yes, no, or maybe. You're going to get the lowest price the first time around, no hassle. I like that. So, guys, if you have any questions, you can go to Harbor Trucks' Facebook page or you can simply go to harbortrucks.com. And how would you like to win a Nissan Titan from Harbor Trucks? Well, the Harbor Trucks giveaway is making it easy, and all you have to do is go to their Facebook page, like it, mark going to an event, and tag a friend. But there are so many more ways to enter until the end of December, so head on over to harbortrucks.com for more information. And I do want to mention that as opposed to their competition, Nissan is the only 100% manufactured truck in America, and the engines for gas are made in Tennessee and in Michigan for diesel. And Rick, something smells so good in here, so please introduce Miss Taylor. You're absolutely right. Right, Bree, and as you can see, we have Taylor Sanders with us. And Taylor, you know, tuna is our spe uh, theme tonight, and yeah. obviously, I see some tuna going on here. So, what are we doing tonight? So tonight we're doing an Asian style ahi tuna with a really nice kind of Asian cucumber salad. All right. So, how are we going to get started? First off, what size piece of tuna do you want to start with? With ahi, depending on what type of portion you want. This is just about two or four ounces of tuna. So I'm going to sear this off in a really, really hot cast iron skillet. And I've had it marinating in some sesame oil, some soy sauce, some sesame seeds, some ginger, and a little bit of rice wine vinegar. All right, well, let's get that started. So and we're then we'll set it right in there. I'm sure you got something else. Oh, yeah. listen to that. That's the sound of love right there, baby. That's what Ooh. you want. So while we're waiting on that, we're going to get our salad started, Okay. which is a really light and kind of different fresh Asian salad. All right. So I have some black sesame seeds. You can get these in white, black, and they also come in a mix. Uh -huh. Then I'm just going to put some low sodium soy sauce, about a teaspoon. That's 
Good enough for government work. <laughs> and a little bit of sesame oil and this stuff, a little bit goes a long way. So uh -huh. you want maybe a few drops. That's it, huh? And a little bit of rice wine vinegar just to give it a little bit of tang mm -hmm. and make it all come together. All right. Then I'm going to add some ginger just for some extra flavor. So that's ginger that's already been yep. chopped up. Been minced up. Then I'm going to add some red bell peppers into the mix. Uh-huh and some cucumbers mm -hmm. a little bit of orange bell pepper just for some color you know i like how you measure you just it's a palm just a palm, palm of, yeah a palm of this and a palm and of a that. little bit of cilantro just for a little bit of a contrast flavor all right we're gonna mix all of that magic can up. i mix that for Go you ahead. while you attend my tuna that you got coming from me and i'm gonna flip this and you just want to keep it on about 30 seconds not even a minute on each side because you want to still keep it pretty pink inside. Yeah, we I'm like it rare to medium inside. rare, depending on the person, right? Yeah, I personally like mine completely raw inside, just a little bit cooked on the outside. Breed like I kind of like some swimming. Yep, pretty much. All right, so what else we got? So we have some of these. I'm going to put these on the plate just for some different texture mm -hmm. on the plate. So these are just some cellophane noodles. They really have no taste whatsoever. And for presentation wise, we're gonna put some black sesame seeds right on top of those. Uh -huh. Then we're gonna add our salad right on the side. Right. And then our fish. And then our fish. And for the beauty and for the sake of TV, this, this is your, is I noticed how you have sliced this nice, nice and, and thin and this is how it's gonna look. It is. Flip it around. Oh, flip it there around. There you go. I appreciate you straightening it out for me. No problem. You did such a wonderful job. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming to see us, guys. It was awesome. But Bree, we got to keep our show going while yes, I we feed do. my face. Yes, we do. You got to keep your presentation mm -hmm. straight, Rick. Captain Jimbo Thomas is in the Casa Vieja Southeast region. He is the master. So let's listen in on his tuna talk. Hey, Jimbo. Hey, Bree, and I can smell that from here. I'm getting a little hungry, and hello, Rick and Dave. That makes well, two you know, of us. Two, <laughs> okay. Well, the two types of tuna that we catch here in the southeast region are blackfin and yellowfin, and also we've been seeing a few bluefins in the last couple of years, but unfortunately we don't see too many yellowfins or catch too many, but we do see them occasionally. But just to the east of us in the Bahamas, there's a great yellowfin tuna fishery, and from May through August, there's a lot of boats that make that run across the Gulf Stream and fish for those tunas off Matanella Reef, which is just north of West End, or off of Freeport in Northwest Providence Channel. Now, these schools of tuna, we find them under big flocks of birds, which we find with a good pair of binoculars or with our radar. And the trick is to get in front of those uh, fish, and you chum, and you fish with live pilchards and chunk baits, you want to use some heavy tackle because these are decent sized fish, 50 pound tackle at least, and use 50 or 60 pound floral leader and 40 to 50 uh, hooks. But lately, the sharks have been a real problem over there and it's been a real challenge getting your fish to the boat before those sharks get it. And I've caught a fish over there throughout the day, but since tunas are low light feeders, real early in the morning and then late in the day, just before dark, by far the best time to catch these tunas over the Bahamas. Now, most of the tunas over there, they're in the 40 to 70 pound range. And then a little closer to home, we find blackfin tunas throughout the year. But late April through July is when we catch the most and the biggest blackfin. And just like the yellowfins, they can be caught throughout the day, but early and late is when they bite the best. And I like to fish with live pilchers or herrings. And what we like to do is fish them under the kite or out of the outriggers, anywhere from 120 to 250 feet of water. And we use 20 pound tackle with 40 to 50 pound fluoro leaders and 40 to 50 hooks. And if you can live chum, that's a really good way to get those blackfin going. I got a photo here, and this was, uh, we were in the Bahamas and we went fishing for yellow fins, but we came home with a nice catch of black fins. We never caught any yellow fins, but I'll take that any day. They taste just the same. All right, Jim. Go ahead. Staying offshore, moving in a little closer to shore, the, the nighttime mangrove snapper bite's been really going off. These mangroves, which have been in the two to seven pound range, they're being found on the outside reef in anywhere from 40 to 80 feet of water, and they start to bite just after dark, and sometimes the bite doesn't really start getting really good till after even nine or 10 o'clock. If you wanna look for marks on your fish finder or anchor up and just let those fish find you, 
and you want to try to avoid anchoring up on top of the reef, but instead look for a hard, ledgy sea fan bottom on the outside reef and fish with a knocker rig with just enough weight to hold the bottom and a 30-pound monofluoro leader and 1030 one hooks. The best baits have been cut sardines, ballyhoo plugs, and cut bonita. And if you got any lights on the boat, those pilchers and goggles are going to show up in the dark. You can catch them on a sabiki, put those back out for bait. My good friend Captain Ryan Ormston aboard the party boat reward out of Miami Beach, or out of Miami Beach, out of Miami Marina, he's been doing night trips and he's been tearing up those mangrove snappers along with a mix of yellowtail and muttons on the reefs right off the of government cut. And he recommends not to put out any chum since this will spread those fish out and also attract a lot of bait stealers and sharks. So the only drawback is that there's a lot of sharks and they've been eating a lot of those hooked fish. Now moving inshore, snook fishing has been good in all of the inlets throughout the region and also around the spillway canals and uh, from Boca north to Palm Beach. The inlet fishing has been best in the evenings. You want to fish live pilchers, herrings, croakers, whatever baits available in the area, or work jigs along the bottom on the outgoing tide. Now, if the water's murky, they've been biting on both tides. The spillway fishing has been best in the early morning or late afternoon using live pilchers or mullet. And then we got peacock bass fishing has been really good in the lakes and canals off of South Broward and Day County. Best fishing has been in the middle of the day or right after an afternoon shower using small life shiners, small Rapalas and lipless crankbaits in chartreuse, silver and black, or green and silver. You want to work that bait extra fast to get the most bites. And then the deeper water, the root beer colored terrorize has been working. And it does seem like the artificials have been out fishing the live bait. And look for these peacocks that, that have been in the two to three pound range around any structure with clear moving water. And there's also some largemouth bass being caught in those same areas. All right, before we say goodbye, we want to congratulate you, Jimbo, and your brother, Rick, for being recognized by the Dolphin Research Program for tagging 2,500 dolphin on the Thomas Flyer. Look at that. Why, thank you. You're good, welcome. Good job, Jimbo. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you next week. We're going to go ahead and get hot spots from the southeast region. Our guide and Captain Jimbo says, inshore, look for the snook in the inlets and around the jetties, fish live baits and artificials, and then offshore. Look for snapper along the edges of the outside of the reef, fishing with cut bait in the evening. All right, Rick, now let's get out the iPad and get ready to FaceTime with our favorite captain there from the Strike Zone Northeast region, Tommy Derringer. Tommy, how are you, bud? Good, guys. Hey, Rick, you know, I hear Jimbo talk about tuna. All I can think about, remember that tuna he made for us at Casa Vieja Lodge? It was unbelievable. Oh, my God. Best thing I've ever eaten. Now, that being said, you know, I don't catch a lot of tunas personally but I'm glad I got buddies that do because I do love to eat them. And we do have a really good tuna fishery here in the Strike Zone Northeast region, especially for blackfin tuna. Now the best time of year to target them is gonna be when the water is a little cooler, usually from the winter on into the early spring. And then we'll have another little run of them uh, coming up here as we head into the fall. Most anglers are gonna target those tuna right on the ledge in about 180 to 200 feet of water. And they're very much structure oriented and you're gonna to wanna to look for those structures that are holding a good amount of bait. A common technique is gonna to be to pull a cedar plug in blue and white or rig a ballyhoo with a sea witch. And you really wanna run those plugs way back. Those guys tell me they run them back 100, 200 yards sometimes. Cause those tunas, they can be a little boat shy and a little spooky. Now the offshore captains, you know, they've told me for years that the tuna bite always goes off when the water's a little rougher, probably because it makes them a little less shy. And we do have some yellow fin tuna around as well, and you can occasionally catch them in the same areas you find the black fin, but if you really want to target those yellow fin, you're probably looking at a long run to the east side of the Gulf Stream. Now I've got a picture here, you know, we get some really big black fins in my region. Here's a great example. Captain Jason Hadges from jhookfishingcharters.com. He sent me this picture of his clients. They had a pretty awesome day of tuna fishing from this past spring season. Now staying offshore, you know, I've been talking kingfish a lot lately and for good reason. You know, we've had a great kingfish bite coming off of this full moon last week. There were a bunch of big fish caught along the beaches, especially in St. Augustine, around the captain's house and just along the beach in the pokey pods. Now the bite has slowed down just a little bit this week, but there's still some big fish to be caught. The nearshore reefs and wrecks throughout the region, they're holding a good number of snake kings 
in that eight to 15 pound range. And as always, slow trolling a live pogey, either up on top or on a downrigger has been the go to, but there were some big fish caught recently just dragging dead baits or even a spoon or a diving club like a, a Rapala x -Rap. Also be on the lookout for some cobia. There were quite a few caught while trolling for the kingfish this past week. Now moving inshore, you know, man, what a great run of tarpon fishing we've had throughout the region the last couple of weeks. The big tarpon, they've been feeding heavily on the pogey pods along the beach early in the morning, and then again, right before dark, and also around these thunderstorms we've been having. Now this week, there's been quite a few smaller fish in the 25 to 30 pound range on those pogey pods as well. Just locate a bait pod and, and find one that's getting worked over by those tarpon, or if you just see them rolling around, then free line a live pogey on a 7 aught BMC 7385 circle hook. Now in the coming weeks, you're going to look for more of those tarpon to move into the inlets as our mullet run starts to kick off. Now, I've been seeing quite a few mullet here in the surf this week, so it's going to start to fire off here real soon. I've got another picture here. This is Maria Lupi Lopez with a nice tarpon she caught with me this past week fishing those bait pods just off of St. Augustine Beach. Now, well, I was just talking about the mullet run and when the mullet are around, so are the flounder. Now we've had some big flounder showing up around Matanza, St. Augustine and Mayport Inlets. There's a ton of those smaller finger mullet around and they make a perfect bait for targeting those flatties. A fish finder rig or a jig head with enough weight to hold the bottom is gonna be the way to go. At St. Augustine and Mayport, fishing right up against the jetty rocks, under the docks or along the seawalls have all been a good bet. Now, a lot of the industrial structures and the docks in the St. John's River near Mayport have been holding flounder as well. Now, the best tide has been an hour or so on either side of high or low tide. Just remember, always remember this, let that flounder chew for a few seconds before you set the hook. Those flounder, they're running anywhere from about two to four pounds. And I've got one last picture. This is a great example of some of the bigger flounder starting to show up. This is Amy Kennelly. She sent me this picture of her and her buddy Mallory Hendricks with a couple nice ones. They caught in the St. John's River near Mayport and they even got the wiener dog in there. <laughs> I'd say they had it all in there, boss. They all do. right, we'll talk to you next week. We're going to go yeah. ahead and read the hot spots from the strike zone northeast region, offshore kingfish, both along the beaches and near shore wrecks and reefs throughout the region. And then inshore tarpon on the bait pods along the beaches from the Florida Georgia line all the way to St. Augustine. Look for busting and rolling fish around the bait pods. You're Florida, thinking about Florida Georgia, Georgia line. line. He's dancing to him right now. What oh, song? What song? Hell, I don't know. Okay, just but you're just dancing. Florida, all right, Georgia. stay with us, guys and gals. Up I next, some music in my head. Why are you? Yeah, more. <laughs> And music. We're headed to the East Region, but first we're checking with David at the CCA Workbench for some new product goodies. I feel like I'm in a canyon, but at least what? it blocks the view over there of him oh, dancing. Thanks. Oh, feel like of him dancing. That's okay, so got not it. nice. Look at it all is. that good stuff. I got a lot of stuff. Yeah, you do. We'll be back to talk I'm, about I'm that stuff. I'm lost in the piles. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear, Real Legends, exclusively at Bell's, and Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger, setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. Built for the rigors of offshore boating, packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Yeah. Stop working right now. 
Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. This is Academy Sports and Outdoors. We offer a huge sports and outdoors selection of top name brand gear like you've never seen. All at low prices like you've never seen. Because we're a sports and outdoor store like you've never seen. Visit us in store or at academy.com for the guaranteed lowest prices. Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. Dave, the CCA workbench is where the products all yeah, get man. shown off, and man, we got some cool stuff <laughs> yes, tonight. Yes, we do. Start off with this is the Yeti Panga submersible backpack, uh, which means it's a waterproof backpack, man. You can take it anywhere you want to go and don't have to worry about your stuff inside. It holds 28 liters. It's 12 and a half by 7 by 20. It's, you know, it's good size. Uh, it's got the, the Hydrolock zipper and the thick skin shell, just like all the other Yeti stuff does. That's uh, great straps very you know, good when you very comfortable a backpack is not fun when they don't have the good straps exactly they got the metal metallic hardware for the adjustments on them too yep. spin around here so i can show them off okay so. there we go you got the metal adjustments on here you got these little grab handles that are all over it even on the on the outside of it as well on the on both sides so you can pick it up whether it's on your back or not you can just give it give it a good shove and get it going you got a place here you can put flies actually in the back yep. you can put a little little felt place there you can put flies and a nice big uh, big zipper pouch here to put stuff in yeah man very cool cool stuff by Yeti always yeah, always thinking ahead and then obviously a place where we can do the sidekick we'll talk about Correct. that another time we'll do that later all right next we got, got next us? we got a we got the caddy can and this is a multi-purpose storage bag you know that's great for if you want to go camping put them on the boat the golf cart any place where you want to you know keep tidy and you want to keep all your stuff all your garbage and, and whatnot your refuse out of sight and it's got a nice well you, you, you unzipped it already and showed it's, it's got a nice little place in here where you can put your put your garbage in straight without away without having exactly. to take it out but exactly. then when you get to the dock right and it collapses too. life made simple this thing collapses as well that whole thing collapses down to like four inches tall so it's easily stowed when you're not two, using yeah yeah two sizes obviously here we got the caddy can and the <laughs> caddy can junior it is like it. it'd be like a magic trick yeah. but it's also it's made out of 600 600 denier fabric you know heavy heavy duty velcro on the backs it's got a big strap if you if you can put the straps and the velcro uh on a tower put it in a little skiff Wherever you want to put it, you can put this the thing. The legs of your rocket launcher. Correct. Yep. D-rings are non-metallic. Uh, number 10 zipper, so it's a really strong zipper. And like you said, you can zip that whole liner out and close it up and take it to the garbage can and shake your stuff out. I heard some of the bass guys are using, they're taking their worms instead of throwing their rubber worms over. Yeah. They're putting them in here and then they recycle Anything. them when they get and back to the And it floats too. It floats too. It's got positive self and flotation. Hey, so. somebody was really thinking exactly. here. Exactly. We, we always need help getting our garbage out of the way. That's for yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. It's All so right. important to get the plastic out. These are some really cool boots by Extra Tough. I mean, I really like extra tough stuff, but these are these are from the Salmon Sisters, and what these are these are designed for ladies. These are their Legacy boot, self-cleaning, flex, flexible, non-slip sole, just like their regular Legacies. These are triple-dipped neoprene, uh, so they'll last forever. You know, 100% waterproof. The Salmon Sisters did all these these designs, and and every time they sell one of these boots, they give a can of uh, wild Alaskan salmon to the Alaskan Food Bank. So what? yeah, so it's so it's a great way we're to we're selling boots and feeding people. Exactly. Come and they're, on, they're, man. They're very pretty and awesome. And you can go to extratoughboots.com and get those uh, legacy boots. They're specially designed for women's women's foot, uh, the ankle uh, fit and everything. So really really nice boots for the ladies. I wish they made cool ones for us. Well, maybe they will. Maybe hey, girls, they will. Can you design some for my maybe they Dave's will. little sensitive feet? Right. All right. Please. Here we got a, to celebrate Tuna Day. We got Guy Harvey long sleeve performance shirt. Uh, it's my favorite color for offshore, which is white. <laughs> I like to have white shirts. 
the less color the better actually because color gets heat but i like this one it's got a beautiful tuna art on it and the yellow fin tuna fade his uh his shirts are you know uv 30 plus and they'll also very breathable and quick drying uh, so anytime you get the Guy, Guy Harvey nice, stuff, beautiful work. you're going to get good stuff. And it's got the nice Guy Harvey tuna on there. So. Just like always, Guy leading the path. Yep, yep, he sure is. Dave, just like always, Bree's got to take us to another region. Yes, she does. I do, and look who I have with me. I decided to get Miss Taylor out of the kitchen and up on the boat. I was feeling a little <laughs> lonely, so thanks for joining me, Miss no Taylor. Problem. Well, guys, fall is looming in the near future, which means it's time to start looking for schooling blackfin tuna in the East region. Talk to us, Mike. It's a truth, Bree. September and October are just great months for targeting those smaller tuna species like blackfin tuna and skipjack tuna. Off Palm Beach, those tuna like that 250 to 350 foot depth range. And the majority of anglers that target them off Palm Beach do it with live chum. They set up a drift and chum with pilchards or sardines. And then they put out baits on 20 to 30 pound tackle with a 30 pound monofilament leader and little bitty, you know, 4X strong hooks. Um, you can also troll small feathers, live baits, or naked ballyhoo around areas like Push Button Hill. Uh, you can look for the birds diving um, on those football sized blackfins out there. As we get into fall, more of the blackfins, more of the bigger blackfins will work their way north. They become common catches around the shrimp boats up in St. Lucie County. We do see an occasional yellowfin tuna in my area. Usually, you know, a week after we've had easterly winds and rough seas. It's got to blow for a while. You can, uh, if you really want to target yellowfin, you can run over the Bahamas, fish off West End or in the pocket, and find good concentrations of tuna on the surface throughout the fall months. Average blackfin tuna in my region is going to be anywhere from 4 to 30 pounds. The average yellowfin tuna is going to be more like 40 to 80 pounds, and certainly there'll be fish that are a lot bigger. I got a photo there. Uh, I was live chumming off the back of the boat with pilchards, we were at 120 feet of water. That blackfin tuna swam up to the boat. And Brian Scott, he tossed it a live sardine and uh, invited it to dinner. Yeah, I love it, Hollywood. Tell me about the kingfish. Well, the most consistent blue water bite right now is for kingfish. It's kind of backing off a little bit, but should ramp up again with a new moon and still just be steady all this week. Um, they can be found on just about any bait school right now. You can catch them in shallow water around the shark barge or the sand pile or the church rubble in Jupiter, or you can go out deeper to 90 at 120 feet to 120 feet off Palm Beach, from Palm Beach all the way to the Juno Pier. Uh, you can fish the six mile reef off Stewart, the junk hole off Jensen Beach. There's even kingfish right now around the offshore bar out of Fort Pierce. You wanna target them with Spanish sardines, red fins or blue runners, you know, rigged on number four wire, wire leader stinger rig. Most of the fish are in that eight to 20 pound range. So, you know, it's a pretty good time to drop down to. 15 to 20 pounds spinning goyer make more fun out of it. Uh, there are some larger fish that are being caught on the beach, particularly around the mullet schools up in the Bureau Cove, where fish to 30 pounds are being caught right now. All right, Hollywood, let's go in, show above. Well, snook season opens this weekend. It's probably the best bite going for inshore anglers. There's still a lot of fish on the beaches off Hope Sound, off Jensen Beach, off Fort Pierce, off Vero Beach, and also good catches being reported from the Juno Beach and Lake Worth Piers. There's a good number of fish in all the inlets as well as around the bridges that are close to the inlets, like the Blue Heron and the A1A Bridge in Palm Beach County, the 25 cent bridge in Stewart, and north and south bridges in Fort Pierce. We're starting to see the first of the fall mullet run. Um, there's also a lot of uh, minnows that are still out on the beach. So food's pretty plentiful and the fish are actively feeding, particularly at dawn and dusk. This is a great time to throw a saltwater assassin four inch shad in the copper juice or green hornet colors. Work those on the beach parallel to shore around the bridges and seawalls. You can fish topwater plugs or die dappers in any of the mullet colors. Uh, you can also throw lip plugs. That, those bites are better right now at night. As always, live mullet, red fin, Spanish sardine. Those are your top live baits. The average snip is gonna be eight to 18 pounds. And I got a photo there. That's Lawrence Quigley. He caught that nice snook uh, around the St. Lucie Inlet. He was throwing a topwater plug. The other bite, <coughs> if you can find them at Red Meadow Schools, there's still some around, you can find the tarpon. And it's not just on the beaches. A lot of the minnows are starting to push into the inlet. And when they do, the tarpon are following those minnows inside. They're not really difficult to locate the minnows. Just look for, you know, like 100 or so seagulls and pelicans either diving on the water or standing on the shoreline. 
and the minnows will be right there. On the beach, the minnows are moving, but there's schools of them that are around Hope Sound, they're around Stewart, they're around the power plant area, and they're up around Fort Pierce Inlet. The one intangible on this bite is that the fish are all sizes, you know, from 20 pounds to 120 pounds. So you can get out there with an eight or 10 weight fly rod or 20 pound spinning tackle, and that's great until you hook the wrong fish and have all your line taken off your reel. So you might want to bring, you know, a gun to a gunfight. Baitfish flies with large eyes are working well, as are saltwater assassin, four inch split tail shads in the silver mullet and calcasieu brew colors. You can also fish live mullet and do pretty well on those tarpon right now. All right, Hollywood, let's go bass fishing. What do you got, bud? Well, I was, I was talking to Captain Mike Schoen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He's saying the Dawn spinnerbait fight on the north end of Lake Okeechobee is nothing short of spectacular right now. It's a really short window, though, from about 6.15 to 7, maybe 7.15, but the fish are busting shad in the channels and also in the Kissimmee grass, particularly between Bird Island and the point of the reef, and they're really feeding well when the water isn't flowing. When the water flows, that dirty water flows in, and the fish are kind of staying on the clean edge of the water. So find that clean water, and maybe a quarter mile away, and you'll find those fish. By 7, 7.15 in the morning, it's time to switch over to fishing live shiners in the pockets of the grass. The key here is to move around until you find the bite. Some days, it takes until 9 or 10 to find the fish. But once you find them, it's a steady bite with a lot of four to five pound bass in the mix and fish up to seven and a half pounds being caught. By noon, you should have 25 to 40 fish with a half dozen or more over five pounds and be heading back to, to the boat ramp to beat the heat and beat the thunderstorm. So Okeechobee's still very good right now. All right, thank you so much, Mike. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Atlas Jack Plate hotspots from the East region. He says inshore tarpon and snook on glass minnow schools off of Hobe Sound. The white split tail shad, live mullet, and topwater plugs are going to work for those dudes. And then offshore, yellowtail, mangroves, muttons in 70 to 90 feet of water off of Jupiter, sardines, and cigar minnows on the bottom. Let's talk about CCA star rig. Let's do we it. We got to really talk about this. Come Another on. tagged fish was caught in the panhandle, making that 24. But guess what? <laughs> he wasn't registered. What? Oh my goodness. With less than a week of fishing left to go, we need to remember star is not just about tagged fish. It's also a catch photo competition and has 16 other divisions with inshore and offshore species with winners being determined by a drawing. You only have until Monday, September 3rd to participate. So get registered at CCAFloridaStar.com and go and catch those we fish. should make a division that if you catch a tagged redfish and you're not registered, you have to pay CCA something. That's a good one. There's an idea. There's an idea. There's an idea. All right, we're headed to the <laughs> Central West and Southwest regions when we return and talking with a special guest from Sirius XM Marine. And remember, if you want to keep up with everything fishing in Florida, visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube, and view and tag us on Instagram. You have no excuse. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at Rapala.com. Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Yeti. Built for the wild. CCA Florida. The voice of recreational anglers for over 30 years. Strike Zone Fishing. Your fish hunt paddle store. And Guy Harvey. Marine wildlife artist and conservationist. Legends Performance Clothing. Everything you need to be comfortable on the water all day long. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime or go to reallegends.com to find a Bell store near you.
Flagler Construction Equipment is your certified Volvo equipment dealer, servicing 55 counties in Florida. With Volvo, you get brute strength combined with bulletproof durability. That means low downtime and optimal production. Flagler Construction Equipment is the partner for all your Volvo sales, service, and rental needs, and your first and last stop for legendary customer service and support. Push boundaries with Volvo. Get to know Flagler Construction Equipment by stopping by one of our six locations or visit us on the web at www.flaglerce.com. So I'd like to welcome Dan Dickerson from Sirius XM Marine. And Dan, we've been talking all season long about how our, myself and our guides are using Sirius XM Marine. So why don't we do a little recap? Okay. So first off, you know, we talked about weather. So let's pull up the first slide and see what happens. You know, in regards to a precipitation, right. what, what do we need to know? Well, the, the advantage of Sirius XM is we're gonna give you the bird's eye view of a storm. And when people hear Sirius XM, what we're trying to get across and what you've done a great job helping introduce people to is we're not just music, we're not just Sirius XM radio. We're able to transmit via our satellite a graphic image and that image is gonna show up on your chart plotter. So what you're gonna see is the boat in the center of the screen and we're gonna show you storms that are around you and lightning strikes that are around you. And through a series of looping all those images together, then we obviously can tell which way it's moving. Right. Our next one, obviously, is wind. Why don't we explain this? The next thing we do is we show you wind and wave information. So we're going to show you current conditions, and there'll be a symbol on screen that will show you the direction and the speed of the wind. There's a symbol on screen. The red arrow shows you the direction of the waves. And then also wave height. The right. color that you see there is your wave height. Where the boat is right now, it's green. Those are probably seven footers. You can see off to the side, there's the yellow. We want to stay away from there. They're probably 11 footers, getting a little rough out there. All right, small so marine boats. zones is something else we talked marine about. Marine zones, that's right. Uh, the, uh, normally, you'd turn on your VHF radio and listen to the weather, but gosh, that's a long message, and they talk about a big area. We've made it a lot simpler. We've uh, highlighted what the zones are and you can literally point to the zone you want and bring up the text information so you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to wait till it goes the right. full cycle. And then obviously what a lot of fishermen are using is sea temp. Sea surface temperature. So let's talk a little bit. Obviously we got the boat running down along the red edge there. That right. could be where the bait's going to stack up. You got it. Not only knowing what the temperature is, you're going to get that off your transducer on your boat, but what we're giving you is, again, the big picture, and we're showing you where the brakes are, where the temperature is changing. So that boat, it's running from red to yellow. You want to follow that line, so, and that's going to show you the So, boat. Dan, no product out there in the market that can give us weather, precipitation, waves, buoy information as well. I mean, so Sirius XM does it all for us. That's right. Everything delivered right there on your chart plotter. You don't have to go fumbling for your cell phone, which isn't going to work more than six miles off anyway. Now, guys, if you want to know about some discounts and a free trial offer, you can simply go to SiriusXM.com forward slash FIFR. Thank you so much, Dan. You did Thank a you, wonderful sir. job. Good job. All right, Bree, we got to go on to another region as hard as it is to quit talking about our weather. I know we're getting serious in here. Sorry, I couldn't <laughs> pass that up. If you're looking for some tuna this weekend, the Star Trek Central West region has got them, and Captain Jeff Page is here to put you on them. Hey, Page. Hey, you know what? In our Star Trek Central West region, our number one tuna is the black fan. Sometimes he can be in as close as six, seven miles. A lot of times he's going to be out a little bit further. You know what? You're going to find him feeding underneath birds. You're going to find him busting on top. A lot of times they're going to be holding on the same structure that your groupers and snappers are holding on. Captain Chris Seager's tight line suggests that while you're bottom fishing, keep a 20-pound spinning rod ready to throw a live bait at them when they come up. You can also chum them to the surface with chunks as well as live sardines and tilters. A lot of times in our region, we'll have shrimp boats near shore cleaning up their nighttime catch on the back of their boats, and they'll get the tunas chummed up. And then our last method of catching them is you can troll for them anywhere from 40 to 50 miles offshore when you just want to target the tunas. And you want to troll over structure, hard bottom areas, holding bait, and you can pull Z-wings or Rappel Axe wraps as well as any type of small tuna feathers in the riggers. I've got a tuna photo tonight. A couple guys from Economy Tackle, R.C. Gilliland and Bobby Maserata. Our next 
species offshore permit. Permit fishery remains consistent throughout the entire region. Down south, you've got to get out a little further, uh, say 12 to 14 miles. But we've had a lot of slick, calm mornings. The fish have been on top. Captain Jason Stock suggests if you can't catch crabs, bring some nice select shrimp out there. Have a few free lines, either the crab or the shrimp. Have a few with small split shots to get them down. And you're going to get your bites. Um, the other day, over a two-day period, he caught, tagged, and released 16 permits for the Bonefish Bone Permit Trust Foundation. And I've got a photo tonight of a quad release Whoa. that he had with some of his clients. Cool. Yeah, man. That's cool, Paige. So they, Good did picture. A, they tagged those and released them. Moving inshore. You know one of my favorite species is the pompano, and it seems like every time this year, Rick, Late August, early September, we get a good push of pompano coming in out of the Gulf. They like to hang around the same deeper grass flat. You're going to see them mixed in with the cow nose rays, as well as areas holding a lot of uh, southern stingrays. They like clean water, so you're going to want to look for that while you're fishing for them. You're going to either see them running across the sand holes, or you'll skip them while you're running your trolling motor or even your big motor, so pay attention. Some of the areas you can definitely count on catching pump another this time of year are the grass flats off Cape Hayes Point in Charlotte Harbor, and then along the bars that run from Emerson Point by the Manatee River north to Bishop's Harbor. I suggest using the U-Pro flat jig in the school bus yellow or the pink and white in the quarter ounce or three eighths ounce. Cool thing about that jig is it has a little pink or yellow fly trailer. And the pompano are averaging anywhere from two to four pounds. I got a pompano photo tonight of 80 fear, 84 years young, Mickey Pope with a nice pompano he got with me. And our last species, redfish. Redfish remains consistent with some big old oversized fish around the channel at Egmont Key. And then the school size fish, 18 to 27 inches, are showing up all along the east side of Tampa Bay from Ruskin to south of Piney Point and then also north of Apollo Beach. If it's calm in the morning, you can see them pushing. A lot of times you want to get up on them, and you can cast Bass Assassin, 4-inch sea shads in the golden brim pattern on a quarter-ounce jig head, or you can throw a free line or cork shrimp or pilchard. And I've got a photo tonight of Captain Gary Huffman of Tuna Breath Charters with a nice redfish. Real quick, the red tide is starting to subside a lot in the areas, but don't let it scare you away because there's plenty of good fish to catch in the Startron Central West region. All right, thank you so much, Captain Page. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the daiquiri deck. Hot spots from the Central West region offshore. Mangrove snappers holding on the ledges and wrecks in 110 feet of water off of Venice. And then inshore, mangrove snappers, decent sized mangoes, all uh, going over to deeper grass flats off of Rattlesnake Key. Got mangs on inshore and offshore. Yes, we do. The Bell Southwest region has some good news to report if tuna is on your weekend wish list. What you got? So, Captain Houston, tell us what we want to hear. Well, like, like always, uh, it's a great opportunity uh, to uh, represent the Bell Southwest region. You know, for the guy who wants to catch the tunas in the Southwest region, I got some suggestions. You know, they can be caught all year round up to about 180 feet on the offshore side. But let me tell you something. One of the main things is the main time to catch these fish is spring and fall. They migrate through the region really closer, and you want to concentrate on depths of about 50 feet, especially when the water temps hit about 72 degrees. Now, the elephant tunas, uh, they can be a challenge. They're found a lot deeper in the Gulf, but rarely targeted because they're so far offshore. But like I said, the black fins up to 180 feet. Best time to catch them, 72 degrees, 50 feet of water. And I got a prime example with Captain Mike Avenon with an example of a nice tuna caught in the region. Now, still on the offshore side, a great bite that's been going on actually all through the region are the yellowtails and the mangrove snappers. Good-sized fish are all through the region, fishing wrecks, towers, ledges, and artificial reefs, and, uh, and with some fish up to 25 inches. And the key here is to chum for them and get them going and get them located. And depending upon the water clarity right now, which is starting to clear up pretty good, if the water clarity is really clear, I strongly suggest light leaders, either flatline or with just a little weight, depending upon where they're on the water column, and simply drop back small cup baits such as squid, herring, shrimp, and pilchards, but also for some of the bigger fish, Bucktails tip on the outside of the schools tend to catch the bigger fish. I got a prime example of some yellowtails and mangroves caught. Kitchen with Captain Steve on the misbehaving on the offshore side out of Naples. All right, Ronnie, before we go inshore, I want to take a look at the Sirius XM Marine buoy data. Now, guys, 
you know, as part of Sirius XM Marine, what they have attend what they have to offer for us is we can click on a local buoy. By clicking on this buoy, it'll highlight it with the cursor. And what it allows me to do is to understand exactly what's going on. It gives me the do the uh, exactly where the buoy is located in reference to where my boat is. And then I can bring up the text and read exactly what the buoy is saying. So we have a southeast wind. We have it at 8.9 knots. There's no gust. Then we also have barometric pressure as well as pressure changes and air temperature and water temperature. The reason why this is so important, fellas, is because it's simple. If you have a barometric pressure that's falling, then it could be approaching cold front or maybe actually a storm. And then you can click on your precip button and see why the pressure is falling. So keep that in mind. And obviously, if you have any questions about Sirius XM Marine, you can go to SiriusXMMarine.com forward slash F. F I F R, and it'll get you all that information that you want. All right, Ronnie, tell us what's going on inshore. Well, you know, Rick, I don't mean to cut you short, but as we've talked about in the last couple of weeks on how much of a confidence builder the serious weather app is for me, I told you about how I'm able to run these storms during the day and be on the outside edges of the storms. Well, I've gained so much confidence in using that app. This is a big game changer for me because now early morning with the storms or late in the evening when I'm running, I don't have to worry about seeing the rain at night. I can run the outer edges of the storms in the dark and don't have to worry about getting caught up in some bad weather. So anyways, let's go on the inshore side. We're going to talk about the snooks. With the opening of snook season, there's a variety of options to choose from, from nighttime around docks and seawalls up in the Punta Gorda area, Alligator Creek to Matt Lachey Bridge along the east wall, around independent islands and sections of shorelines with current. Now on the southern end, from Coon Key to Pavilion Key on the outer faces of the islands, last half of the incoming to the first half of the outgoing, using live shrimp, live pilchards around the docks and the seawall. Independent islands and mangrove shorelines, I would strongly suggest the Chartreuse Skitterwalk, Golden Silver Spoons, the Bass Assassin Die Dappers in the 3.5, the 5-inch and Houdini or Snowstorm, 3 to 4-inch subsurface lures of white chrome and chartreuse. i got a couple prime examples of some nice snook just recently caught, one down in the southern end of the region, and then another up in the northern end of the region while fishing with Captain Danny Latham. Snook season should be great with this opening weekend. Now still on the inshore side, the triple tail. Indian Key to Lostman's River, park boundary markers, blowdowns, and submerged dead wood, especially where there is a current. This is basically a sight casting pattern, run and gun, looking for the fish, or blind casting jigs around structure to draw the fish up, or noise making course to attract them around the structure, blind casting. Live shrimp, live filters, or the bass assassin, foreign sea shad, shrimp, or similar artificial bait to get those fish. Good weekend coming up. Enjoy the Labor Day weekend. Be safe out there and catch us some fish. All right, Ronnie, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Calusa Cast Nets hotspots from the southwest region. Offshore permit throughout the region on wrecks, towers, and artificial reefs using live crabs. And then inshore, Pompano fishing inside and outside edges of the sandbars. Also, the grass flats from Jug Creek to Alligator Creek, the west wall using tube lures and bright colored bucktails. You can also use artificial shrimp imitations. It's Labor Day weekend, I totally forgot. Oh, wow, can you mommy brain, that? what can I say? Mommy brain, that's, yeah. uh, get used to that. I will. We've got one more region <laughs> to check out here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, and that would be the Northwest region, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back with your Capitan. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Harbor Trucks. Visit harbortrucks.com. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Suffix, always use the best line. The IGFA, fish for the future. Flagler Construction Equipment, your exclusive Volvo dealer. And Okuma, inspired fishing. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Outside is a bully. Bears, screaming in fleet-footed waters, arrogant mountains, Goliaths, Goliaths, Goliaths. 
and a hundred other excuses to stay inside. But there are ways to deal with bullies. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Hi, this is Chris Freeland of Harbor Trucks. And my family has been in the business for over 70 years, and I hope that means as much to you as it does to us. Trucks have always been my passion, and I've assembled a team of experts to help find the right truck for you. Harbor Trucks also has a dedicated commercial department that can design and deliver the perfect truck or van for your business anywhere in the country. Our staff includes master technicians ensuring every one of our trucks goes through a rigorous inspection and reconditioning process. We also have a team of customization experts that can build the truck of your dreams, including custom tires, rims, bumpers, LED lights, and more. Come test drive every make and model in one location at our on-site towing and test course, or we can deliver an amazing truck directly to you. Harbor Trucks, hassle-free buying and low, low, low prices. Check us out now at harbortrucks.com. That's harbortrucks.com. Today's PowerPole tip of the week is about the new manual spikes from PowerPole. They're the spikes that you drive yourself. Now they have a lot of great features, starting with the comfort grip handle. They also include six foot of rope and a lifetime guarantee. The eight and a half foot heavy duty spike is great for the larger boats like pontoons, bay boats. Now for you guys that like to anchor off the beach, this is a great application so you don't have extra rope out in the water. Our eight foot ultralight is designed for boats up to 1,500 pounds and features the hollow core technology. Also, our six foot spike works great for kayaks and also for you tarpon guys, when you wanna secure the bow and you don't want anything in your way, this is a great option, especially if you're fly fishing. Another great thing is the $100 rebate that's now on for the micro and the spike. So go to your local retailer, take advantage of that, and that's your power pole tip of the week. So Bree, you know we're going to the Keys this weekend, and mm -hmm. I have the heavy duty spike already loaded in of the boat you do. for sandbarring at the for holiday. Labor Day weekend. Yeah, of course. So I don't have all that rope out. It's nice. perfect. I can even actually stake out my contender. There you go. There you I go. Like I like it. That. All right, we've got Captain Jeff Hageman on the line with the tuna scoop in the Flagler Construction Northwest Region. So go for it, Captain. Well, right now is the time to go catch them. Um, the water's right. Um, we got nice calm seas usually this time of year. And what we've got mostly is a lot of black men. Our yellow fins are quite a bit further out, but we do have them too. You want to start looking for the black fins at anywhere from 80 feet of water and out. Uh, look for birds, bait, um, anything out there, especially frigate birds. They'll get over top of them when they're up there busting the surface. You can also find them behind shrimp boats when they're dumping their bycatch. That's a great way to catch them. Pull right up to the back of the shrimp boat, throw a handful of five sardines out the back, and you're going to get a lot of bonita in that and sharks as well. But you can weed through them and usually catch quite a few black fin. Uh, high relief structures also hold them pretty good. Some of our offshore artificial uh, wrecks out there will hold black fins in that 80 foot of water and out again. Sardines, thread fins, free line behind the back of the boat, a lot of chum is an effective way to get them fired up. Like, like I said, the bonitas are also going to be mixed in there with them. The yellowfin tuna are going to be quite a bit further out. You're going to be doing 150 miles plus. Uh, naked valley hole, valley hoo is a great way to do it. Big lip plugs, pulling them behind the boat, um, or just stumbling upon a school that you see porpoising out there. So keep your eye on the horizon when you're going offshore, either group of fishing or targeting tuna. Staying offshore, the snapper bite in the entire region seems to be really good right now. The mangrove snapper are still together from their spawn or post-spawn, depending on what part of the region you're in, and they're eating in depths as little as 20 feet and all the way out to 80. Been the reports I've been getting on consistent bites. Sardines, 
cut sardines I'm talking about, uh, shrimp, live, or pin, small pinfish are working well. The best way, way to rig these is on a knocker rig with six feet of 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and a two out hook. You want to use a small hook, they've got great eye shape. That's why I'm using that six foot leader. And then a half ounce to two ounces of lead, depending on your depth and your current. You want to try and get away with as little bit of lead as possible. Uh, chumming, while you're anchored up, is a great way to get these fish fired up. You can bring them up out of the water column and get them away from the barracudas and make them a little easier to catch. And I've got a couple photos of a, some nice mangrove snapper caught locally right there in St. Pete. All right, let's go inshore there, Bob. The redfish in the region still is going good. Starting the lower part of my region, from St. Pete to Hudson, including Tampa Bay, fish are biting best at the top of the incoming tide and the beginning of the outgoing tide. You want to fish around mangrove shorelines with a good overhang on it. A lot of the fish right now, it's really hot. They're getting up underneath those mangrove shorelines to hide from the heat. Cut pinfish, cut ladyfish, cut mullet are a great place, and you want to place that bait right up under that chunk of that bait right up underneath the mangrove. Uh, moving north from up to Cedar Key, Captain Jimbo Keith of Cedar Key reports the outer islands are producing some good redfish right now. On the outgoing tide, he's using cut mullet on a knocker rig. Moving a little further up the coast, and Keaton Beach, Captain Pat McGriff of One More Cast Charters reports that the redfish have been in the shallow water outside Creek Mouse in his area. Going all the way up to the area edge of my region, Captain JB with JB Charters out of Apalachicola reports the redfish bite in his area has been in the shallow water among the mash points. The made feed times have been early in the morning and slowing down throughout the day. East wind picking up, they're biting on three, uh, uh, three inch chartreuse swirl tail swim baits and also feeding on live mullet and live pinfish. I got a couple photos there of some nice west coast redfish. Nice, good job, Hag. All right, let's talk about some scallops. The scallop report, uh, Captain Mario of Tautier Charters out of Plantation in the Crystal River area reports they've been in four to six feet of water on the grass flats from Crystal River, Crystal River to Homosassa and running south from Crystal River. You'll find some super clean water that way and a little bit, you're gonna look for that shorter grass and boats have been getting their limits in anywhere from three to four hours. All right, thanks so much, Hag. We'll talk to you next week. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Northwest region. Inshore, snook bite in the lower region and the outgoing tide used pinfish and sardines. And then offshore, mangrove snappers in 70 to 80 feet of water over high reliefs. Use a hookup and a tail hook jumbo shrimp or sardines for bait, Bree. All right, when we come back here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're telling you what to get rigged up for next week. So stay hooked. Shoot, look at that Titan. It's so nice. pretty. It's so it's pretty. pretty. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Hellmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open sea. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point or a position and heading with stay point or a heading while you drift with Drift Point. Yamaha Helmaster, now with Set Point. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. It's one of the most ancient forms of hide and seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line.
Thanks for tuning in to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes, special segments, and updated fishing reports from your region right on our homepage. Just head to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Make sure to tune in next week because we are talking all about the bait. Oh, all about the ahead. bait. Go, I knew go, Rick was going to get excited. Come on, I've been dancing all night. I just need he an excuse. Come on, Rick. All break. about the bait. Anyway, we'll dance right. into that we'll next week. Dance off. We will have a dance off. Right. And we it. have Taylor here. I we're going to get to eat her dish that she prepared for us. Go Can ahead. It looks awful good. Eat it now. It looks Dave like, never uh, gets to have any. Dave here. I know. It looks like beef. Isn't it, it so, so good, good. Dave? Tuna. Yeah, I'll eat it so all Taylor, right. time. Oh. you did such a wonderful job tonight. Thank you so much for coming in. How is it, fellas? Awesome. Okay, you my need turn. To come back. If we're gonna do this more often, I think everyone should write in and tell us how we need a cooking segment every show. I can hey, do that. if you want to sponsor Taylor in a <laughs> cooking segment here all on right, the Florida Insider Fish Report, happy Call Labor me. Day. <laughs> See you next How's week. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>